Hello and welcome to Heavy Metal Rex. My name is Waze and today I am on location in Iowa. And if you've already seen my previous video hanging out with Graham at Paragon Performance today, there's one other person in Iowa that I actually had no idea was here and I'm very excited to see. Behind me is the Driven Media Garage. And inside is my buddy Kevin. And I'm really excited to go in there and talk to him because I have been watching Kevin since before I got before I even got my VAWX a couple years ago. And obviously you guys know him from Subi Speed and obviously now he's got his own channel which is doing really, really well. And I'm excited, I was excited to see that he also picked up a VBWX, also a white one. It seems to be something about us content creators just loving white VBWXs. But we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna say hi and I just wanna kinda sit down and I just wanna talk to him. As one creator to another, I just wanna talk to him. filming the usual videos and all. How's it going? I caught you I caught you in the <laughs> middle of it, man. Thanks so much for having me out here. Now I have to redo my take. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Oh, that's okay. Hey, you know what? I'll help you do it. I was thinking okay, maybe there you if you go. got some time today, we can sit down and just, uh, you know, just talk to creators from creator yeah, to creator. Yeah, let's do it. Welcome to the uh, Driven Media Shop. Uh, you know what? I'm really excited because I've always seen it from one or two <laughs> angles and now it's kind of cool to be able to see it from uh, on. Hey, you want to take us on a quick little tour? Yeah, let's do it. Obviously, we've got the two cars. We have the VBWX over nope. here. Not too much done to this yet, but I have some parts over on the shelves that need to go on this. Uh, and then this is the GR86 uh, that went to SEMA last Love year. It. A lot more done to this car, uh, but hopefully this car will get to that stage as well. And then I've got stock for the Driven Media website. Oh, yeah. Uh, a bunch of carbon fiber, lighting, uh, and some other various parts. Uh, parts on this shelf to make a sim rig later on that I need to put together. Oh, dude, that's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for that. I wish I would have that set up now so that I could throw you on there yeah, and see how fast you back. are. Yeah, exactly. All have to come back. So, yeah, I've already been putting down set times up. on, uh, on Graham's because Graham is next door. Yeah. I've already been putting down tons of times on Forza over there. So <laughs> okay. I'll well, have to come back over here and do the same. Exactly. But uh, over there is basically the fulfillment, getting everything shipped. My wife's actually over there helping me right now. <laughs> She's making overlays and such, and then we have the little lounge area right here. I remember I saw this and I was like, yep, that's where I'm gonna spend the night. I don't even need a hotel, I can just bunk here. Exactly. So we can hop over here and uh, talk about what's going on. Sounds good. So. <clears throat> All right, Kevin, thank you so much for letting me come down to your shop. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm super duper excited. I was telling you before <laughs> I got here, um, and I've said this, like, my, my favorite thing about being on YouTube is the fact that I have started being able to meet all of the people that I used to just sit at home and watch. Yeah, no, on it's, the internet. it's definitely one of the coolest things because even myself, like when I was at my previous employer, mm -hmm. I got to meet so many cool enthusiasts out there that shared the same vibe and passion. And that is the greatest part is the community. It really is. I, it's, we know that the Subaru community isn't the, isn't the easiest to deal with, but I would say like most car communities are not like that. Yeah. And you know, I'm 38, I'll be 39 soon. I've been on the internet for 20 years, okay? <laughs> I've been in the video game community for the longest time. So if there's like, I know what it's like to have to deal with people. And every community has like a couple of bad apples, but like with yeah. the VB community, I've noticed, and this probably happens every time a new car comes out, um, we get new people. Yeah. And they always come, you know, starry-eyed, a little green, but like mm -hmm. excited. They start yeah. excited and they see, oh man, everybody's helping each other. But then they also see like, oh, why is this guy yelling at me all the time? Because I put an SKI logo on my car. <laughs> okay, that, that that still happens. Yes. Yeah, I had to argue with somebody just this morning about about this, but um, so, you know, so it's really cool to see because I, I got a chance to talk, go next door to see Graham. Yeah. And I was hoping to see a couple of other YouTubers that were supposed to be here in yeah. this, you know, in Iowa of all places. I never, <laughs> I didn't even know Graham was here. I didn't know you were here. I don't know anybody was here other than Corn. Most people don't. They're like, where, where are you from? Iowa? Some people don't even know where that is. So. This is actually true. All of, the, all of the states that start with an I, if you yeah. ask people, they Idaho, probably wouldn't be able to find. They think they're all the same. Idaho, Iowa. <laughs> so you got potatoes, you got corn. What is Illinois known for? Logs? Because <laughs> Lincoln, right, Lincoln, corn. Lincoln's from there, right? More so corn. like, Because I St. Louis is like right on the edge mm -hmm. of Illinois. And, and so we go to Illinois all the time, but like, 
I haven't seen anything in Illinois that's worth <laughs> Chicago. Yeah, but that's like way, way <laughs> on the other side. So it's like you have to drive through all of Illinois just to get somewhere. That's where, that's what people think about when you say Illinois. Chicago, Chicago has, oh, but yeah. Chicago has really cool stuff. Like I went up to Six Star Motorsport up there mm -hmm. a little yeah. bit ago, and there's obviously like so many other shops yeah. in Chicago. If you go to, um, Gillette, what Siri Fest is coming up. Yes. So we tend to see a lot of people yeah. come from Chicago, which we, we still need to talk about that because I think I think we should like do some stuff mm -hmm. at, at Siri Fest. So, yeah. All right. I still so need to sign up. Tell me. Oh yeah. <laughs> people have been asking like they've been buying their tickets, and I'm like, oh man, I, I really need to yeah really need to get like, on that because like it's crazy. The schedule gets so full that like I forget mm -hmm. that something is coming, and if I don't have it on the calendar. I'll just miss yeah, it. Yeah, I should probably go do that like right after this actually. <laughs> I think we're both gonna buy our tickets. Okay, so, t so tell me, I wanna know more about like your journey. Cause I've, I've been, like I said, I've been watching you since you were you know doing YouTube videos before. Yeah. And now you've moved on to doing YouTube videos yeah. yourself and you've done already some really cool <laughs> stuff. So like kinda, kinda tell me, wh when you first started doing YouTube in the very, very, very beginning, mm -hmm. and somebody said to you, Hey, can you make some videos? Yeah. Like, what was like, what was your thought process? Like, you know, it's funny because I didn't start out making car videos. Uh -huh. I actually started way back, and I was making like makeup tutorials and lookbooks for my girlfriend at the time. Okay. So it was me filming her doing stuff. Okay, so then, you not you making the video. Yes, exactly. I was not in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna look those videos no, up. <laughs> no, 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 no. It wasn't me doing my own makeup. This time. <laughs> Uh, but that turned into, uh, I had just bought a WX because uh -huh. I had, I used to have an Oldsmobile Alero. Okay. Oh, dude. And that was my first car. That's like the, that's like the, I'm going to the army special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my two door green Alero. That, I got into an accident with that. Uh, I actually hit a drunk driver. I T-boned mm -hmm. him and totaled the car. Uh, and then I ended up picking up a bug eye wagon. Okay. And that was my Bro, that was like my, dream, my intro to the car community and being a car enthusiast was uh -huh. that car, uh, and I started doing autocross with that and I ran into somebody by the name of Yo. Okay, uh, you, if you watch Subi Speed way back, you may mm -hmm. know who that is, but he saw my, those videos that I was doing mm -hmm. and was like, "Hey, you should come do videos for us," and so that's when I jumped into that position mm -hmm. there and, and started filming him because he was the face of the company at the time and he was doing the installs and the reviews and such. And then they got, we continued to grow and grow and got big to where he needed to hop off and worry about his own thing. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, I'm gonna need you to take over. So I got in front of the camera for the first time. If you go back and look at those videos, completely different yeah. person. I look completely <laughs> different. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. It's them. just this scrawny little Asian kid <laughs> with a bowl cut. It's oh, hilarious. Oh, dude. It is hilarious. The classic bowl cut. Yes. Like, what are, are we, we talking like early 2000 teens or like? So that, yes, early, that was in like 2000. I started, I think, in 2013 or 14. Uh -huh. And then from there on, I started getting on the camera. And yeah, so that was a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nobody, nobody is the same 10 years ago. Yeah, like, and, and I, and it, when I started doing videos, it was so scripted. You could tell I was just like reading out of uh, the, off of the script and sounded like a robot. Uh, but now, obviously, it's become natural. Yeah. <laughs> it's less awkward. <laughs> I, I find that more fun. Like there are times where I'll, I'll think about writing a script. Like mm -hmm. when I first started, I was like, I should write something. Like yeah, I should write yeah. something for something. And I... I actually used to just leave my laptop next on a table next yeah, to the camera just so you with a teleprompter it. just to see, but just kind of keep track. But I was like, this just doesn't feel right. Like it, <laughs> and then, and I felt like I would mess up more reading it than if just I just like whatever came, yourself, yeah. yeah, whatever came to mind. I was just and now I just fucking say whatever. Yep. Like, I don't even think about it. <laughs> and then I'll think about it after I'm editing. I'm like, wow, that's that why was did, pretty. Why terrible. did I go up on that tangent? Why did I say that? <laughs> So, so you did all that stuff. So you got real comfortable with it. Now, mm -hmm. now you're doing stuff. You're obviously now when you make videos, it's like, yeah. So now I, I uh, back in, in late 2022, I started driven media. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually a couple of years before that, I wanted to start my own channel. So I had been doing the videos for work for a while mm -hmm. and it got to a point where it kind of took, I, I really enjoyed making videos right? yeah. and, and it kind of took the fun out of it. Because oh, okay. when you turn a hobby yeah. into a job, yep. that's just what tends to happen. So I wanted to start my own YouTube channel to make it fun again. 
and, mm-hmm. and give me something outside of work to do uh, with cars. Um, so I started that. I bought a rebuilt FRS. Yep. It was a flooded title down in Texas. Picked it up for like $6,000. Super cheap. Uh, and it ended up being the perfect car to turn into a track track car. Track what year car. is it that you bought that car? Um, was it possibly 2015? <laughs> no, it wasn't 2015. It wasn't that long ago. Okay. It was 20s in the... T- in, oh, okay. Because I was going to say, I lived in Houston. Oh, yeah? And when the floods happened, I had an RX-8. And my car, my RX-8, yeah. like, flooded. And it, it literally drifted away so in the floods. So, I don't think this car actually was in a flood. Okay. I think what happened was the driver drove through a oh, body of water. Damn, yeah. And, like, waterlogged the engine. Uh-huh. Okay. And then they had to tow. I was just wondering. I was like, man, yeah. is it, like... No. Because, like, right after Katrina, we had that major hurricane. And, like, Houston just gets... Yeah, it just gets flooded. So I was, I was wondering maybe if yeah, it was no. from that same time. Because usually I would not touch a flooded car, uh-huh. right? But this guy had bought it at auction. He swapped a motor in with like a junkyard motor, and he had been daily driving it for over a year. So I was mm-hmm. like, if there were any electric issues, they would have popped up by now. Yeah. So I was like, I, I felt pretty safe picking up that car, even though it was a flooded car. So I went down, flew down, picked it up, drove it back, and I tracked it for a couple of years. And it was a blast. Yeah, it was clearly it was fine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that car will always hold a special place yeah. in my heart. Uh, fortunately, I did sell it just recently <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to make room uh, for who knows, maybe a different car. But GR uh, Corolla, <laughs> GR Corolla, Supra. Uh, GR Corolla. Oh yeah, yeah, Supra would be or nice. Or maybe <laughs> like uh, maybe let's just pick up a, something I can turn into a drift car. I, I've been mm-hmm. wanting to build a drift car, so An I don't know yet. Alera? <laughs> Go way you know, back. Didn't they come rear wheel drive? Were those not rear wheel drive? I don't. Re- I don't. I think my, they were rear wheel drive. I don't think if they did, mine was not. Mine was not. Mine was definitely front wheel drive. That's it was funny. a two door green. Alero. That hunter oh, green just, too. It was like it was. Was it that hunter green? Yes, that yeah. Yes. Man, what a classic. Uh, yeah. It was my dad's color. car. It was a hand me down. <laughs> I don't remember how many miles it had on it. But Enough. It that had, car was, it was good an to me. It, it, it probably had like 200 grand. And still <laughs> it was a good car. It was yeah. until that whole incident happened. Okay. So <laughs> fast forward to you picking up a VB. I've seen a lot of your videos with the VB. You know, mm-hmm. you sitting outside with your little bucket. And actually, you know yeah. what the funny thing about the bucket was like, I was going to say, I have a chair. I had a little chair. Yeah. And it's the chair that I use. That okay. I sit in my garage and I make mm-hmm. videos and it's from my daughter's table. And I had a second chair and, <laughs> and my, my wife was like, you should send this to somebody. You should send it to like a different YouTuber. I was like, but I only have one chair. Yeah. Who do I send it to? <laughs> so I flipped a coin. It was between you and Tanner. So I, I literally, I, it's, it's like drawn on and yeah. everything. My daughter I was like, you know, That's I'm going to send it to someone. Because he sits on like um, a step stool mm-hmm. and you sit on a bucket. So I was like, I got to send one of these guys a chair. <laughs> So I flipped the coin, and fortunately, you didn't no, get it. No, that's all and right. And I sent it to Tanner. He hasn't even gone to his PO box yet to the, pick it up. The funny thing is, like, people love that bucket for yeah. some reason. They're, they named it Bucky the Bucket. That's And hilarious. they're like, it's so cool that it's over there somewhere that you brought it to the new shop, uh-huh. even though you're not working at, in the garage anymore. But it's like, I guess, a part of the channel now. It's Bucky the Bucket. It's funny. <laughs> I had a, I, when I first started doing installation videos, I didn't, I don't have a lamp. Mm-hmm. So I had, my wife had like this, this, fancy lamp that I just took the shade off. Yeah. I have like a 60 watt bulb. I'm like, this is really bright. <laughs> and it, it, somebody saw it in one of the videos mm-hmm. and then it just became a thing. And I started using it in every video <laughs> because I needed that's it. Funny because how that works. Like, yeah. People just latch on to, and that's the funny thing about YouTube is like, there's, you don't know what it is that people are going to look at and be like, well, yeah. that's like really funny. Or that's really cool. Yeah. Like, you guys bucket. notice like crazy things that we don't think about sometimes. Or it's just, we don't put it in there for the purpose of it being a focal point. It's just it's a coincidence. Just a and somebody would be like, what's up with that bucket? Yeah. No, that's funny. <laughs> so how you been liking the, the VB? Uh, I actually really enjoy the VB. It is a great all-around car. Mm. Obviously, the GR86 is a lot smaller. There's not really usable back seats. But with that car, I can do whatever I want with it. I can take it yeah. to the track. It's a good grocery getter, a good daily driver. I can drive it in the winter, although it's not really set up for the window right now (laughs) and compared to the old va chassis i think it's a huge upgrade Uh, Mm -hmm. the fa24 
is a massive improvement. The chassis itself is a lot more stiff and, and out on the track, you can really feel the difference. Yeah. Uh, I remember driving the Super Speed VA uh, WRX out on the track at uh, RPM. I think it just changed owners actually mm -hmm. recently, so it's a different name now, but it's track out two hours away from here. And I drove that and then I drove a stock, pretty much stock VB and it felt much better. Obviously yeah. the power was a little mm -hmm. bit different on the VA because it was very heavily modified, but driving the VB, it just felt like it had a lot of potential because it was stock, didn't really do much to it, but it still felt really good yep. out on the track. I've been trying to emphasize that so, so much because most people will just, you know, it's even to this day, most people will just look at the picture on the internet and be like, mm. I'm good. I, I'm not even gonna try it. But like, I, I had a VAWX. It was, it had like a downpipe and intake and, and like, it was making like 295. Yeah. A little aggressive for like what people consider like a stage two WRX. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tracked it a lot and I autocrossed it a lot. And exactly what you said, like when I got my, when I got my, actually it was, I didn't even have mine. When I drove my cousin's VB, I was like, <laughs> man, this is just feels so much yeah. better. And as soon as I went back to drive my VA, even though my VA was modified, I, it, it, I felt like I got into a car from like eight years ago, mm -hmm. 10 years ago. And, and that I think is what a lot of people are finding out. Yes. Some people don't enjoy how it looks, but I feel like that's that happens every time yeah. Subaru comes out with a new car. People dog on it for how it looks, and then after a little bit, they warm up to it. They see the different modifications that people mm -hmm. do to it, and they're like, "Okay, it's it's cool." Uh, and now people are seeing the power numbers that yeah. that FA24 are making, and it and people are getting in and actually doing test drives and comparing it to the old car or other cars out there, and they're seeing that it is, it is actually a very good option compared to what else is out there. And like I said, it is a really good all around choice if you're looking for a car like this. I still think between these two cars, like I, I, I've never driven a BRZ, but I've been in one, and I did the race when we did like stock BRZ versus stock WRX. Mm -hmm. And look, that BRZ was ahead. It is quick, <laughs> right? But it, they serve two different purposes. Mm -hmm. Like I love the shape yeah. of the, the, the G, yep. GR. There's no getting the, around the that. It is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful car. <laughs> but I mean, I still got a family, right? And once my daughter gets a little bit older, I think I probably will, you know, like maybe if they have like a 2028 BRZ, mm -hmm. I, I probably will get one as like a, a third car because it just looks so good. But you know, you know, we talk about like the, the average owner of the WRX, even like up until 2019, JD Powers did a thing. It was like 36, is yeah. the average age. And like most of us are, you know, we have to have performance. We don't have to. We don't have to have performance, but we, <laughs> we have want to have it. Performance. But we we had to have like back seats or you know, because even even though I drove over here, I still left the baby seat in there because I was like, well, I'm not gonna take it out. Like, <laughs> I'll just leave it in there. It doesn't really matter, you know. So I mean, most of the people I talk to generally, they're like, well, I I want I want a fun car, but. I still need a lot of practicality mm -hmm. and like for even with the price hike, there really is nothing that you can buy for $32,000 that is all wheel drive, six speed, has four doors, this turbocharged. Mm -hmm. Still there isn't. Yeah. And you know, people in the comments will argue all the time, like more expensive cars, or they'll argue like, you know, Elantra N. Elantra N, I think once you get past that, it's a Hyundai, it, <laughs> I think it is a really cool car, but it's front wheel drive. Yeah. And that, that just, for most people, they don't want a front wheel mm -hmm. drive for car, but they're somehow they're okay with type R's. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. Everybody's <laughs> like, oh, I hate front wheel drive cars, but I like type R's. Well, I think with the type R, if you drive it, it doesn't feel exactly See, I've never like, driven one. like a front wheel drive car, but it's just slightly different, uh -huh. right? differently enough to where you can get past that fact. <laughs> really? I, I've, I've always wanted to drive, because I had a GTI. As mm -hmm. well, I had a GTI as well. Which year? Uh, I think it was 2000. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I had it. I had that for five years. Mechanically phenomenal. <laughs> I went through like seven alter. I actually still have an alternator in my garage because I bought an extra <laughs> one because I was like, but my daughter was born and we, the AC kept going out, the compressor kept going out. Electrically, it was garbage. Oh god. But mechanically, I beat that thing to hell, and it it was like 
Still I, I really enjoyed my GTI actually. Uh, I took it to a couple different tracks. I took it to a road Atlanta. Yeah. And that was fun. It was a good time. Was that was it when DCT I was first. Or six speed? Uh, it was six speed. Six speed. Uh, and I was still learning at that time, and it was a, it was a great car to learn on. It really yeah. is. It's and, very smooth clutch. Yeah. On there. Stock yeah. clutch, very smooth. And again, that's another car that is pretty practical, mm -hmm. um, no matter what you're doing with it. And the interior was really nice. Dude, I the really interior for the interior. 2011, <laughs> mine was a 2012. And that's the one thing when I moved over to my VAW race, I was mm -hmm. like, ugh, <laughs> what is it? I was really disappointed because, I mean, I wanted a WRS my whole life, but I going from like, because I went from my GTI, it was, it was a dump at the end. Mm -hmm. And so a buddy of mine, uh, or my friend, her husband owned the Volkswagen. Yeah. So they were super nice to help me get out of it. Cause I was, <laughs> I was, I was young still at that time. And I was like super upside down on it. And they got me into a Jetta. Okay. It was a 2019 base Jetta. Yeah. Even that was so nice. Yeah. Like I compare that to my VAW Rex. Mm -hmm. I bought that Jetta for $20,000. Mm -hmm. It had led lights inside and outside. Yeah. It, you know, it was like 42 miles to the gallon. It was still turbocharged, so it was fun to drive. And it had like blind lane assist. It had a nice infotainment yeah. system. And I got on my VAW Rex. So I was like, I paid $33,000 for this. Why, why is you there halogen have, bulbs? You still have halogen bulbs yeah. outside and Everywhere. inside. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, dude. I, and the, the infotainment system obviously was a lot nicer. It was yeah. more, more responsive. Yeah, the cheap, what? Cheap fake leather steering wheel peeling yeah. on you. Oh. This is definitely not a we hate Subaru show. <laughs> <laughs> but these are like actual things that I think that they're legitimate concerns. Because even when I get into the VB, you know, I do like the infotainment system. People don't like that tablet style. But I mean, it's the future. Like if you yeah. want flying cars, you have to be okay <laughs> with a tablet in the car. Like, like I'm okay with it. But Hey, you have a tablet. I have two clear oh, screens. Right. Hey, you know what? I saw somebody actually just did that swap on, yep, on yep. Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I think you can take one from like the Cross Trek and swap oh. it over. Yeah, because it's the same. It's the same head unit. I'm I'm looking for a TR okay. because it has the um, the wireless Android Auto oh. module in there. So I'm waiting for I'm waiting for one of you guys. If you crash it, let me know. And you're parting <laughs> it out. I will. I will. There no, I mean the people are buying them for like six hundred bucks on eBay, mm -hmm. and then just. Which turn around yeah. and sell mine. Yeah. So exactly. that's, that's not a bad option. But that's the nice thing about them going to this global platform is there are parts that even from like these other cars, because like people are putting um, the 21 or 22 cross track suspension on the VB to lift it. Hmm. And it's, it's, I mean, there's like some, some modifications yeah. required, but if you're right, you were going to say, oh, you don't mind. Yeah. I actually don't mind the, the dual screens, okay. but my one thing that I do really dislike about it, that bottom screen mm. kind of feels useless it's at empty. times. Yeah. I would like to ha at least have maybe the HVAC controls take up that uh. screen at maybe at all times until you press it and change it to something else or like some information on the car or so something you, like just, that. Just, just doesn't show anything it's, ever? So you have the HVAC controls on the bottom of it. Okay. And then there's like two little boxes that you can press on for apps. And then the rest of it is blank. Oh my God, dude. And I'm like, why would you, like, it's useless. It really is. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't even understand why they thought that that was going to be okay. Like the way that Subaru, this is, we're just gonna all this. The way that they try to save money is so weird because they finally decided to give us LED headlights, but they still didn't put LED uh, LEDs inside the car. They still left the yeah. smaller phones. And the freaking LEDs that you can buy from the factory are like hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah. And there's only three. You only get you only get the the dome lights. Oh my god. The, the map lights in the front and the dome light. That's it. You don't get the vanity. You don't get the the bump. The yeah. Uh, the, the, the lights in the trunk. Mm -hmm. You don't get the lights and the license plate. 18 bucks. 18 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. That's all it It's ridiculous. Takes. I can't, I just, I don't, I have made all these little complaints on like all my videos. I <laughs> hope somebody from Subaru, actually, I know there's actually two people from Subaru that live in St. Louis. Yeah. And I got a chance to talk to them. And I, I feel like every time we go out to lunch, like we talk about like our kids mm -hmm. and then we talk about, you know, life. And I'm like, why the hell is Subaru doing this? Why the hell are they not three LEDs? Why is this not Put changed yet? And he's like, okay, we're not going to go to lunch. Keep doing this. You know, I have, I have another buddy I do this with. He works at Rockstar, Rockstar Games. Mm -hmm. He's worked there for like 12 years. And so he's worked on GTA 4. Yeah, and he's running yeah. GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2. I will, something will happen in a game. I will screenshot it and I will text it to be like, 
Why is this uh, doing this? Can you fix this? And he's gosh. like, no. I just, why are you texting? Me? <laughs> I had I'm nothing like, to do with that. Contact. I know you know somebody. This is dumb. Fix, fix this. It. Fix this for me. Fix That's it. That's funny. I did, I did finally beat Red Dead Redemption 2 and I sent him a picture. He was asking me, he's like, yeah. have you beaten it? I was just like, four years after we came out. <laughs> I just never even played it. I sent him a picture it's of time his, his tag. I was like, look, there's your name. I finished it. Happy. <laughs> But also, here's the list of complaints that I have. Yep. Now here's fix these. And make a new game <laughs> for the next. I know. I ask them every day. I'm like, yo, where's my GTA six? <laughs> Where is it? I'm. I, everybody's waiting, but I need to know first. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So you said you have done some tracking and stuff. Yeah. With your cars. Um, where is even the track that's around here? So we're the uh, closest one. It's two hours out in Omaha. It's not actually Omaha. It's like right outside Omaha. I think it's called like Pacific Junction or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, it's a really pretty small track. It's not like Road America or anything yeah. like that, but it's a cheap track day. Uh, you could go out there for like a, with a group of 10 and it's like $100 each person that's for the full day. Bad. That's not, dude, that is and not And you can just all. run laps. Yeah. Even with just 10? Yeah. Dude, ours is way, mm -hmm. we need like, usually we need like 70 to 100. Yeah, see, no, this, really be, this, and it's still like 200 up, like yeah. $200. A person. Like, the track conditions aren't the best mm -hmm. because that area has been flooded a couple of times. So the track surface has been pretty beaten up, oh boy, that's which why. sucks. <laughs> that's and, why and cheap. the company that used to own it uh, didn't really maintain it very well. Uh -huh. But I think it just got purchased by somebody else and they're actually doing some maintenance on it and, and repairing the track surface. And I haven't been there since. So okay. hopefully they're doing some good work there and yeah. you can go back. That price up just went up from $100. <laughs> it's okay. To I'm, a little <laughs> over $100, I'll take it for a track day. It's Track days have been getting more expensive because like the yeah. last few years, I was paying 160 a day for our, because our, mm -hmm. we have a really nice track in St. Louis. And now it's like 250, 250. Yeah. But then we have another one down in Ozark, mm -hmm. which is like a two and a have half Have you been to that track? track? No, Ozark. I heard it's crazy. It. Apparently it's really because <laughs> so it's really fast and they have a lot the of elevation banks. change. Yeah. yeah, and that's it's a little scary. But then that's like three sixty five a day, mm -hmm. and that's and you have to reserve paddocks separate. So the nice yeah. thing about the St. Louis one is they have forty eight paddocks. So if you get there, and that's like so it would be forty eight. It'd be like double to like mm -hmm. uh, ninety six ninety six paddocks, um, and it's it's like pretty good. Yeah, you know. So if you get like seventy people in there, everybody gets a spot. You don't have to reserve it. It's just like. You just get there early in the morning yeah. and you'll you'll have a spot. And for the most part, I think like they actually extended it. So every track I've been since, it's it's covered in that cost. Mm -hmm. But track days can get really expensive. They are, especially if you're trying to go to like bigger events, like the Grid Life events, oh, they are yeah. getting more and more popular. And it's harder and harder to find a ticket actually to drive those events now because everyone wants one. And those are getting up to the hundred, like $500. If you want to do one out in Damn, Cali, dude. I think Laguna Seca was like 1200 or something like that. Wow. For a time attack ticket. But I mean, it's... But that's it's Laguna, Laguna Seca, Seca, you know? Yeah. So, like, I would, if I could have brought my car out there uh -huh. and driven, I probably would have paid for that. But I was like, I don't... My, Just to my be able Tacoma, to get a picture down the... My Tacoma's the not going to be able to haul my car <laughs> through the mountains. <laughs> Yo, I've seen weirder stuff. I've seen people uh, pull Outbacks with, like, U-Haul trailers with their vans. <laughs> like I so the, the the Sunset Hill Subaru where I got mine we were actually I watched somebody show up from out of town with like I want to say it was like an Odyssey yeah with like a U-Haul car trailer load the Outback up and then just drive interesting off. so I think you're I think you're I don't know I feel out. like it'd be sketchy <laughs> going down mountains and I would probably overheat the brakes <laughs> that's I mean you know I guess would it be worth it maybe probably but well you just drive the car there that too. The, that that's the only that, concern is if something breaks. That would have been terrible, though. That car was super stiff mm -hmm. and loud. I would have lost my hearing. <laughs> that's not that bad. <laughs> I, I, people do. People do drive. Like I, I yeah. drove in this car down down to. I mean, pretty much everywhere now. Yeah. I haven't gone to the West Coast yet, just because. But your car is still comfortable. It is actually your well, car is still I comfortable. Mean, I mentioned this before. Like maybe it's my back, but like I find it to be uncomfortable. Really? After after like a few hours, like mm -hmm. my legs start getting tired and my back starts. Tired. I actually have to like. I think I'm just getting old. Yeah, I don't think that's tell the car. Me it's like really comfortable. I don't think it's the car. <laughs> I car also, I don't have. I didn't have any airbags in that car. Oh, so I, I had problem. harnesses. Yeah, and, and a roll bar in the back. Oh, you had a roll bar. You're good. <laughs> 
You're a robot. I'd have to wear my helmet and Hans yeah. device the whole time. You just gotta no, get that I didn't cool have air conditioning. Suit. Oh man, I was gonna say you need that cooling suit. Okay, that would be. You just if you keep driving fast and you get that air. Yeah, in just there, get that roll air down the windows. Out. That's one Hope thing I don't like about track days is like I I have like a lot of issues hmm. like as a person, right? And so. When I started doing car stuff, all those issues I didn't know existed mm. until I started doing car stuff. Like the first time I, I tried to work on a car, I was laying underneath the car for like a couple of hours. Yeah. I got vertigo. Oh God. I got up. I've I had vertigo had for happen. like three weeks. And I was Holy like, sh- I didn't even know I had vertigo. Like when the hell? Like, I didn't understand. I have I got not up, had that happen. And I almost like fell into the, the door. And then when I was laying in bed and I would get up out of bed and I was like, what the shit? And I got vertigo again. So now if I go like work on the car, I have to take like Dremony. See, no, you just need to get a lift. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I actually somebody was selling like a two post in St. Louis for like, yeah. like eighteen hundred dollars. And that's actually not a bad price. No. But I, I can't That sounds that. sketchy though. Well, I mean it was like from somebody's <laughs> shop, you know. But I mean I can't fit that in my garage. Or maybe like the Max Jack. Have you seen those? No. They those don't go as high as these. Uh-huh. But those are ones that you can actually unbolt and move so that oh. it doesn't stay in the spots if you need to like move uh-huh. stuff around. So you drill, I don't, I haven't actually seen them, but uh-huh. you drill some stuff into the ground and it allows you to come over and then you bolt it down and it's able to raise it. I don't remember how high, but high enough where you're not like you know laying I on your back. I think I've seen that. They got the ads where the dudes are like on the chair and they're just rolling mm-hmm. around. Yeah. I think, I think I have seen yeah. that. I have a, a couple friends that do have that. and. It's better than Jack and Jack's dance. Oh my God. I mean, but I mean, me, I don't know how much like I'm going to be doing, like, and I say this, like, I'm not much of an installer. Yeah. Like all this stuff is still new. And you know, I, I talk to people like, oh, you'll do it. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm like the guy who's just going to do all of the work. I am because I'm cheap. Like I don't want to spend a lot of money. So I will do it for that purpose. But I, most of the times I don't find it like super fun <laughs> to do just to install stuff. Maybe I like stuff. installing oh. stuff. Oh like, man, damn. I, I, I like there. installing <laughs> stuff, but I don't like filming installing oh, yes. stuff. Yes. Because it adds like, it doubles Three or triples the amount yeah. of time it takes. Yeah, I completely <laughs> agree with that. I actually, I've said that a bunch of my videos too. I'm like, I don't mind doing it, but man, do I hate it. It's, <laughs> it's, you know, and I've had other people coming back to like the YouTube stuff, people like more and more, BB owners, they'll message me and they're like, hey, you know, I'm gonna start making videos now. And, and you know, I got this part and they'll be like a break kit. I'm like, oh, have fun with that. <laughs> have fun with that. And usually if I go back and see the videos, they'll be like, hey, I'm gonna install this break kit. And now it's installed. I'm yeah, like, ah, I didn't go through the ah, process. Oh, uh, you, uh, you left out all that. <laughs> Where's the install video? I'm sure that was a really difficult installation, but um, movie magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like three weeks later. You know, that's, that's like my kind of stuff. Like I remember when I installed it was the intake, the diverter valve, the turbo inlet, and there was like another piece that I needed to install. I started at like 11, 11 in the morning. Mm-hmm. I got done midnight. <laughs> like, it, and then I still had to start the car and make sure it was okay. What was the worst thing you've had to install ever on any car? Obviously the VAJ pipe. <laughs> because my- the, I, You strip I, stuff? Yeah, yeah dude, okay. I, <laughs> I, and you know what's funny is I actually, I called my buddy and my buddy's his best friend had a shop buddy mm-hmm. and uh, he was like, well, just, just put it back together and we'll take it there. And I think that just made it worse. Cause then oh, when we yeah. got there, we spent five hours drilling the stud Ooh. and then we had to retap it. And I was like, thank you for helping yeah, a me. A lot of people <laughs> have had issues with that. I have been lucky enough where I've worked on mostly newer cars uh-huh. and cars that have not been driven that much. This thing had 2,000 miles. Or, <laughs> it was a VA with 2,000 miles. It was like 1,700 miles. So from the factory. Yeah. What about you? What was the, what's the, what's the worst? Cause you've done tons of installs. Yeah. What's the worst one? I would say it was, I think it was a Boomba shifter install, short shifter the, install the on the VA. Shifter. Okay. And this was cause I didn't have as much experience, uh-huh. but it is a very lengthy install because on these cars, it's, I mean, it's the same thing on this car. Yeah. You have to completely take out the shifter assembly from yep. the car to actually change it out the, car, the lever. Top the car. And so, and it's a really tight space mm-hmm. and, and there's just so many different pieces in there. So when I took it apart the first time and 
again, I'm filming this, so yeah. I have to film every single step, and that made it even longer. <laughs> and then, like, trying to figure out how to put it back together. Um, <laughs> so I actually did the install once myself without filming it, just so I could figure it out. Oh, and then I put man. it back, and then I had to take it apart again, <laughs> and go back and film each part. And so it was just, it was more difficult, not difficult, but uh, just tedious. Yeah because I had to do it twice and then film Ew, it the second time. That is hilarious. Um, I'm trying to think. Any Anything I've worked on that's rusty has always been a pain. Yeah, that's, 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 that's just a given. And that's usually studs, yeah. even if they're new. They just, they're just, because the coating on them I mean, is I changed, not very I good. I changed the studs on this car already because- And it was okay? It was over torques from the factory. The like, yeah. I went to, I went to change, what was I doing? I was installing some spacers for a video and oh. I couldn't take the, I couldn't take the, the freaking lug nuts off. And, and I had to use, I had to use the jack handle. On oh, the end. damn. And they broke free. Luckily I didn't uh -huh. break any, but I was like, I'm not going to use these wheels. Yeah. Again. So I just ended up changing just them. Change them. <laughs> were they hard to get out? No, they luckily no. were okay. okay. I just had to use the, the breaker bar on each and every on one of them. One. Okay. I, they impacted the crap out of them. Yeah, people even, and I have seen people at certain Subaru dealerships just bang, 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 yeah. and I'm like, I don't like that. Because we were actually, so well, recently we installed the coilovers on Xavier's car and that was the issue that he had because he had just got wheels put on. He had just, he, he just had yeah. new wheels put on. And I was like, yo, this is not 98 pound foot. Like we had to work because we had to actually uh, torque the, um, I was showing them the difference because like the camera bolt is like 114 mm -hmm. pound foot. I said, this is 114. Whatever was going on with your wheels was like 200 because like it was basically, I had to do what you did. I actually yeah. had to go get my old jack stands thing and just like yep. add it and make like a long thing. And I was like, why? Why? And, and I, I know that they impact. That's me. why I, I usually try and not take the car to the dealership for anything, mm -hmm. even like, this car has a recall for the tail light. There's a tail light issue where sometimes uh -huh. the turn signals won't work or something. I'm not going to take the car yeah, to the dealership. Yeah, it's just going to live with it. <laughs> a lot of people that actually take the car to their dealership end up having scratches on their bumper because they take oh, off the tail light and they put the yeah. new one on and they scratch the bumper. But I just don't trust the techs that work there because yeah. those guys are kids. nothing against them. They're, they're, they're working, right? Yeah but they're getting paid by the hour. And so they're having to knock out these jobs yeah. as quickly as possible. And sometimes that means that they're not taking the utmost care when they're working on your car. Yeah. And that's when you get loose drain bolts, Dude, loose lug yes. nuts or too tight lug uh -huh. bolts. And yeah, it, it's not a good, good combination. So there's something that happens a lot. Um, I'm good friends with my dealership down there. They're actually, they actually do a pretty good job. That's good. And um, I get to hang out with the service guys, but they 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 also they always tell me like these horror stories <laughs> that when people go to and and it's like cross tracks, foresters, like other regular you know mom and pop cars, like they'll go to other car places like Jiffy Lube or something to get oil change, and they will uh, take the they will take the wrong drain plug off. They'll take the drain plug off of the transmission, and they have had so many transmissions come in, so many cars come in with busted transmissions because That's Jiffy Lube ridiculous. drains the transmission. How crazy is that? Oh my God. Here's, here's my horror story, okay? Okay. So we were taking a shop GR86 to Olin's mm. to get some, do some prototype testing and we were gonna go to road Atlanta as well. And so we drove down there, got the suspension installed. And unfortunately the shop that they usually get their alignments done at was oh. booked full. So we couldn't get a spot. So we had to call up the Toyota dealership there. And we told them, hey, we've got like, aftermarket control arms on this car because okay. we had a full SPL kit on there. And we told them, we've got aftermarket suspension parts on this car. Are you willing to do an alignment? And if you aren't, that's okay. Just, yeah, say no. just say no. But they said yes. Oh. So we took it to them. They aligned it. It took forever. We were there for like two hours what? and they were like, oh, we'll get it done in an hour or whatever. We sat there for two hours. And so I went back there to check on it and uh -huh. they're like, is everything okay? And they're like, yeah, it's fine. And so they gave us the spec sheet. Everything looked, looked fine. Uh -huh. So we took the car, we started driving to road Atlanta and on our way there, all the lights on the dash started popping up the traction, uh -huh. ABS. And I was like, what the heck is just going on? And, and so I was like, okay, maybe it's just something weird. So I kept driving a little bit. And then after driving a while, I felt the car 
like starting to get unstable. <laughs> and so, and it was getting dark uh, and we stop at, at a gas station and we get out and I could, I look at the wheel and it's, the toe is physically super way off. Uh, like you could tell by just looking yeah. at it. So I look underneath the car and I grab the toe arm uh, and I'm able to rotate it. Oh boy. And then, so I'm like, okay, if they forgot to do that on this corner, let me check off. All four corners, bolts were loose or missing. And this could have been catastrophic. Yeah, that's really bad. This could have been catastrophic. <laughs> I mean, if that toe arm comes off, yeah. we're going wherever. Yep. <laughs> and so, so then what ended up happening? Did you guys contact them? We contacted them and they said, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if something had actually happened. Exactly. Like, let's say you, they did that work for uh, an old woman and Who's she not gonna didn't go know any better. She didn't arms. know any yeah. better and she would keep driving. That's going to end in an accident. Yep. And they're still not going to be held liable. Because she's you not going to be like, oh, yeah, I got my toe arms done. You know, I got yeah. my alignment done. And, X and this was a dealership? This was a Toyota dealership. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. All right. All okay. right. Tell us which one it was so we can tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and these are the kind of horror stories you hear. I had one of my, actually Xavier, his, he had an 08 uh, WRX and they actually, at, at a dealership in St. Louis, I'm not gonna say which one, <laughs> they um, they didn't tighten his oil pan, the oil drain, and, drain plug. and that's exactly what happened to him. He was driving and all of a sudden his oil light came yep. on and he was like, why is my oil light came on? So he took it to the took it to the dealership and the, the plug was gone. Oh God. And I'm like, how did your, you survived. You got lucky that you made it there without even yeah, knowing Yeah, he drove it to the dealership it was after like right, the lights turned It was like, as soon as it happened, I guess he wasn't very far from okay. it. So he's like, I'm just going to go right back. to the Because he, he had just got his oil change. Yeah. And he went right back. And uh, he was like, they were like, oh, yeah, let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead. should have just good. kept driving and then just uh, got a new engine. Dude, <laughs> that's just so, it's so crazy. And like, I've never, like my old family car I used to take to the dealership, I have never taken... I, I got my oil change one time mm -hmm. and it was like the, the first schedule one for my VA. And um, I wasn't doing my old, old, old changes at that time. Actually, I'd never really changed. Yeah. I have never really done a lot of car stuff like mm -hmm. with my other cars. I just let like the dealership do it because I, yeah. I always had like extended warranties. And so I was like, ah, it's okay. And I never really had any issues. Like with my RX-8, I had an extended warranty. Actually, I lost compression in my engine. Oh yeah? And I got a brand new engine. Oh, okay. Extended warranty. There so, you go. And then, it flooded, and then it flooded. So like, I didn't even get to enjoy it. It was like 90,000 miles. They gave me a new engine. I think I was seven months from owning the car, like paying it off. Yeah. So, I was so tell me, what is, what is the future for Driven Media and you now? Oh, I know, big hard. question. Yeah, that is hard because <laughs> I mean, when I started this, I didn't, I honestly didn't have this huge vision, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of got forced into it and I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do now. Yeah. I mean, this is my passion. So I'm going to continue doing this so I can keep doing what I do. But now that I've had more time to think about it, being able to create something that not only allows me to continue to work on the cars, go to shows, mm -hmm. go to track events and continue to build these cars, but also allow other people to do that. That's that's what I, I want to do. I yeah. want to help other people see that, oh, you I can do this too. I can do the same thing that's Kevin's doing. Yeah. I can work on my own car, turn it into a track car, a drift car, autocross, or fun daily drive, whatever it is. You can work on your own car even if you have no experience. Um, and I can help you with that if you need. Yep. And, and provide other <laughs> cool parts, aesthetic parts. I want to kind of diversify the parts that I mm. offer uh, later on as well. So if someone needs suspension, brakes, exhaust, or that sort of stuff. I want to help people with that. Yeah. I want to help people with that. Um, because right now there's a lot of big corporate companies that have taken over this yeah. industry that all they care about is taking your money. Mm -hmm. And I don't want it to be about that. I want it to be a community. Like we talked about in the beginning, yeah. this whole community and the car community as a whole <laughs> is a fantastic place. You find, really great people that can be friends for the rest of your life it's it really is true like i i've met people on facebook marketplace mm -hmm. that ha were gonna buy something from me or i was gonna buy something from them didn't buy anything yeah. we are still friends to yeah. this day it's just sharing that same passion and drive mm -hmm. it's it's crazy how these cars 
even if you have a different car, yep. can bring us all together. So that's really what it's all about, is just building that community. Um, obviously, I do have to take care of myself as well yeah. at the end of the day, but I want to help bring other people along the journey. You know, with, with you, can, you can do that with humility. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people that are taking care of themselves, but they're making sure to let you know that's, <laughs> that's what they're doing with all of it. That's, yeah. I'm here to take care of myself. Yeah. But I think that's, you know, we have, I think just in the VB community right now, like we have some people that, you know, I think all of them are pretty, pretty humble, pretty down to earth. But I think they're all still kind of small. You know, there's like me, there's you, there's Joey Matato. We lost Cody. Cody ended up selling his <laughs> VB. I was very sad about that. Um, you know, there's like a lot of people that want to start making videos and like, I encourage you to not go in the mindset of like, well, I want to make a YouTube channel and it's going to grow. Don't even think about it. Yeah. It won't. As I promise you, unless you do, unless you have a ton of money, <laughs> this, and this is a fact, unless you have a ton of money just sitting around, which I know some of you guys have, cause you keep buying those big break kits and I keep telling you, don't do it. You know, it, it's, it's not an easy thing to do if you're trying to make it. But if you do it because you enjoy it, just let it happen. That's the biggest thing you know. is you have to enjoy doing this. Because if you don't, you're going to stop <laughs> real quick. Lie. You're going to yes. stop real quick. You're going to find out <laughs> that this is not what like, I want to yeah. do. Yeah. So, I, I put out a video last year. When the, when the year ended, I wanted, I wanted to be fully transparent. I put out that video about like what my one year of YouTube was. And I, <laughs> I talked about how much money I made. People were, cause like people thought, oh, now you're like 10,000 subscribers. You must be making so much money. People are sending you all these parts. I'm like, have you seen my car? Like there's people out there whose cars are like 10 times more modified than mine. And it, this is, where do you think this money's coming from? <laughs> you know, this not. And you know what's funny? I had someone comment on my video the other day and they're like, cause I, I had an ad in a video uh -huh. and they're like, if you keep putting ads in your video, I'm going to stop watching. Dude, I don't even understand that. That's like I, such a weird I was like, thing. How do you think I can make these videos and yeah. work on these cars if I don't put ads in the videos? Now, okay, to be fair, this is something that they talk shit about like big, bigger channels. They, oh, well, you know, you lost your soul. Uh, I'll say it. I, every Donut Media video I watch, there's like 10 people in the comments saying like, why would they do this? Why? And it's like, well, how do you think they can do the stuff that they do? You know, it is a necessary evil. And look, I hate ads too. Look, I hit that skip button every time I see it. I'll, <laughs> I have to watch my own videos. I'm like, why? Why is there an ad? I just want to watch my own video, right? And I get it. But like, especially when you're small like this, like there's not, like I have companies send me parts mm -hmm. that yeah, I can install in the car, but you can't even see them. So like, I can't even make videos on them. So it's like, it's not, it's, yeah. and I, I didn't know any of this stuff. So coming in as just like, literally like a noob in this It's a large learning thing. curve at first. <laughs> I wish everybody would just send me parts. I wish everybody would send everybody parts. But, I wish I got more parts. Everyone know. thinks that I get everything for free. I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's... I have spent way too much money on these cars. Yeah. Then I care. Yeah. My wife's back there, so I'm not going to say that much. But. <laughs> yeah, my wife watches these videos, so it's like, she was just like, she's like, when are you coming home? I'm like, uh, it's... And I saw, I was like, damn, it's three o'clock. Yeah. I, I was actually thinking about doing a video of like how much it costs to build this car. Ooh. So who knows? Maybe it, maybe I'll do it that. Under, is it under fifty? Oh, I don't know. You don't have it's to say probably, the exact number, but it's probably around there. That's around. Yeah. Uh, uh, wow. Only because like <laughs> I, it, this was, I've never done this before. Uh, but this car is like I went freaking crazy yeah. and this nice, super nice stuff. It was my JDM street build car. Yeah. So I wanted to stick with that and get the bridge seats and the freaking GT Beyonds that. Mm. Oh God, stupid. But I mean, if you do it <laughs> once, you know, it's, it's still fun. It's yes. still fun no, to do. I, I love the car. I love what I've done with it. And I mean, looks great. Super fun to drive. So yeah. So I, if you want to make it's videos and you buy parts, do it because you never know at what point in the future, somebody is trying to do that and they're going to get on YouTube and they may not find video for that. Like that, um, whatever that AFE exhaust that we did on the exhibit, there is no video anywhere on YouTube. And I don't, I guess because people were like, I don't even know what this exhaust is. Yeah. And David said he was going to buy it out. And I was like, you are doing this community a service by buying mm -hmm. this exhaust because now there are two videos, mine and AFE's video, which is not <laughs> even like a, it was like, okay. You know, so yeah. 
anything you buy, just like it doesn't hurt. You know, I, you don't always have to do things to make money. Yeah. Just do them. Just I think my biggest advice out. I can give to anybody that is trying to make videos on YouTube and stuff is make the videos for yourself. You know, don't do it for somebody else. Yep. Make it for yourself. Make it fun. If you enjoy watching the video, other people are going to enjoy watching the video. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a, that's a I think that's a good good way to cap all this off. So if you like what I do, if you like what Kevin does, both the links will be down in the description. Make sure to follow us, uh, or you don't even have to follow. You can just watch. <laughs> I think most people just watch yeah. it. That's okay too because you know it still shows that you guys enjoy it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, Kevin. Thank you so much, yeah, man. Yeah, thanks this for was, stopping by. This was actually a lot of fun, and yeah. I know we could probably go on for at oh, least yeah. another like <laughs> 10 hours. So anyway, we'll see you guys in the next one.